Washington, Ms. Delbene for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, um, I'd ask unanimous consent to submit two letters for the record supporting remote collection authority legislation, one from the Federation of Tax, Administration, uh, Tax Administrators and another from the National Governors Association, the National Conference of State Legislatures, the Council of State Governments, the National Association of Counties, the National League of Cities, the United States Conference of Mayors, and the International City County Management Association. Without objection, they will be made part of the record. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank all of you for being here today. This is an incredibly important issue, um, one that I've also worked on as former director of the Department of Revenue for the state of Washington, which is a original streamlined state and has been very engaged in this um, for a long, long time. And I want to highlight how important it is for small businesses that we address this. Um, we talk about burden, but if you walk down the street in many towns in, in my district, um, for example, uh, there's a running store in Mill Creek, Washington called Run 26. Um, the owner there has talked about many examples of people coming in, trying on shoes, talking to sales associates there about what they need, and in the end, buying something online so they can avoid pay paying that 9.6% in sales tax. And that difference is an unfair difference. That 9.6 is the incentive for someone to buy online. And in many cases, this concept of what people call showrooming is the idea that people are actually looking for help on products to make decisions on products and they are using local retailers to get information and then buying online and that disparity is a huge disparity it is decreasing not only sales tax revenue collections but it's also hitting our small main street businesses and i hear these stories over and over and so it's incredibly important that we address that and make sure we have an equal playing field um, some of the things that have been talked about are, are compliance and, and um, complications of using software. I can say as a former entrepreneur who actually helped start up an e-commerce company that, um, that there is technology out there that many small businesses actually use technology provided by others to do this work today. Um, but I did want to ask Mr. Crosby, you talked about a consolidated audit agreement in, in your testimony and in your written statement, and I wanted you to describe in more detail how you think that would work. Thank you. One of the problems that has been uh, raised with the Marketplace Fairness Act is the concern that, uh, that remote sellers would be subject to audit by multiple states. And so the, the easiest way to address that is to simply limit the number of states that could audit a remote seller. And one concept is to require the states to enter into an agreement so that a remote seller would only be audited by one state or a delegation, delegate of a state, um, something that might be set up uh, by the states together. Uh, and then for each audit period, which as you know is normally three years, a remote seller would at most be subject to audit by one state. The other option in there is simply to eliminate the audit burden completely for smaller remote sellers who use certified software so that the, the audit liability would, would fall there. Um, there have been questions raised on this panel about whether that's possible. Uh, certainly, Congress can write those liability provisions to protect remote sellers from unnecessary audit, and I think uh, it's, it's fairly simple to do if this uh, committee chooses to go that direction. And Mr. Kranz, how do you feel about that type of idea, consolidated auto agreement? I, I think it's exactly the direction that Congress should be going. You know, there, there is, you know, there is software that's in existence today, making sure that it works, making sure that, that companies can use it, that everybody's held harmless, that the states provide the information on a timely basis so that the software works, and that we all get to the right answer from a tax collection standpoint. Those are all things that can and should be ironed out in the federal legislative process. There, some of it is in the Marketplace Fairness Act in the Senate. Uh, if you look at earlier versions of the bill from previous sessions of Congress, there were different things in there. So all of, all of the guarantees to make certain that our state and local sales tax regime works properly in an e-commerce environment can be addressed by Congress. And uh, one more question for you. If some folks had brought up earlier this idea of one rate per state, yet that would create a different differential between um, local sales tax and um, what people did online. So we have a difference right now where people might be charged or have sales tax collected if they buy at a local store, but not if they buy online. Wouldn't that also be a problem if there was one rate per se, you'd still have a difference between what people pay locally and what they pay online? There would be, and you know, presumably some, it would be a smaller tax differential. 
Um, I don't know if you were here earlier when I was saying that the one rate proposal really does force a tax increase in the lower tax jurisdictions. That to me is the biggest problem with it. Um, even if it were only applied to remote sales uh, and you narrow the scope of the problem, uh, it is a, a rate difference. It does have economic impacts and I don't think it's the right answer for the, the, the larger problem we're facing today. The right answer really is making sure that software, technology, information, and a system is in place to deal with the burden. I agree. I think the we're trying to get to parity where there's an equal playing field. So Time thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back. Chair, recognize the gentleman from Idaho.